Hello, welcome to the calculations section of this video. Let's begin with the enthalpy of neutralization definition. I've just taken this from LibreText, uh, a source that I often use in my teaching and in my videos. Okay, it's the enthalpy change of neutralization with reference to the number of moles of water produced. Okay, so you have to look at the ratio of reactants to the moles of water on the right hand side, which we'll look at in a second. We are expecting the value to be around minus 57 kilojoules per mole, but for reasons I will go into at the end of the video, we're nowhere near that. Okay, let's have a look. Um, we've got sodium hydroxide with sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide with ethanoic acid. Sulfuric acid completely ionizes in solution, it is a strong acid. The Ka value are found is 1 by 10 to the 3. That means there's a thousand times more H plus on the right hand side, or a thousand times less undissociated H2SO4 on the left hand side. This is a very strong acid. Yes, there are two subsequent deprotonations, but I'm going to keep the overall here for the sake of this experiment. That, that's not really very relevant. Okay. For the second one, we have ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid only partly dissociates in solution to make the conjugate base and the proton on the right hand side. In this case, I've drawn the salt, sodium ethanoate, and the Ka value for ethanoic acid is by 10 to the minus 5, 1.8 by 10 to the minus 5. So there's 10 to the 8 difference between these. So it should be 100 million times different in terms of the neutralization. It should be massively different. No. <laughs> no, it's not. And I have looked around. And everyone finds this. It's not just an unusual thing that happened in the laboratory in Singapore on Friday lunchtime. So there's the source, uh, Washington University. Seems trustworthy. You do get fluctuation depending where you look for Ka values, but it's there or thereabouts. So we've got the idea that in both of these cases, sodium hydroxide must be the limiting reactants. Because I want the ratio of sodium hydroxide to water. And if I know the moles of sodium hydroxide, I know the moles of water, as you can see in these balanced equations. So let's have a look at the systems. So first of all, we have, I've set it up with two molar sulfuric, with one molar sodium hydroxide. So the sodium hydroxide is limiting. And in the second system, it's two molar ethanoic with one molar sodium hydroxide. Okay. You saw from the video that I added 25 cm cube of the uh, acid to my beaker and I ran 40 cm cubed of sodium hydroxide from the burette into the beaker with the thermometer probe into it and you saw on the the graph and the extrapolation which I did um, just how we got the delta t values t1 t2 okay. the mass in my q equals mc delta t for my sulfuric sodium hydroxide system is 40 from the sodium hydroxide 25 from the sulfuric acid, making 65. Specific heat capacity, I'm assuming specific heat capacity of uh, sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide is the same as water. It's a fair assumption, it's not that far off. 4.18, and then 4.1 was delta T, which we got from the graph by extrapolation, and it's working back on that descending temperature to the intercept on the Y axis. So for sulfuric acid, we've got 40 plus 25, 65, times 4.18, times 4.1, I made 1,114 joules. But that's joules, but that's so the moles of water that we produced, which in this case is the moles of sodium hydroxide. So I want it per mole, per one mole. So to do that, I need to divide that Q energy, 1,114 joules, by the moles of sodium hydroxide. 40 cm cubed is 0 0.04 dm cubed, and the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, as I mentioned, is one mole per decimeter cubed. So we have one times 0 0.04 is 0 0.04. So if we divide our energy produced, 1114, divided by our 0 0.04, we get 27850 or 27.9 kilojoules per mole. And I'll put the minus sign in there because we know heat is evolved, it's exothermic. So it must be negative. So I made it minus 27.9 kilojoules per mole for sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide. Clearly, miles away from the minus 57, the literature says it ought to be. So what happened with ethanoic? 
with f and m at q equals mc delta t again m is the same i ran 40 sodium hydroxide into both beakers and i started with 25 cm cubed of each of the acids so 65 4.18 again same assumptions but the temperature give rise was actually less for the weaker acids that was a good result i was happy with that 3.7 gives me 1005 joules same moles equimolar sodium hydroxide to water same volume same concentration so it's same number of moles divide 1004 1005 by 0 0.04 minus 25.1 kilojoules per mole thankfully less than sulfuric that was a good result but miles away from where it ought to be so what do i think um we should have improved or perhaps done better in my rushed experiment on Friday lunchtime. The method was fine. Okay, thanks to the technician, she set it up, that was great. Um, I used a glass beaker, I should have asked for a polystyrene cup, it would have been insulated and kept the heat energy in the beak, in the, this cup, not using out the beaker, radiating out the beaker. The temperature, the bell was about to go, I didn't have time to let the temperature drop even further and then come back, I just had to press stop and run off to my lesson. So I could have let that go further, improve the accuracy of the extrapolation, going back into the intercept. Stirring, I shook it a couple of times, <laughs> to be honest. Um, constant stirring would have helped. And then, you know, it, it, enthalpy of neutralization is measured at standard conditions. And I had two molar and one molar, and I didn't start at 298K and you know, put those things right. I'm sure that would help. But the method is good, the method is sound. So how can you use this for internal assessment? I'll put a few ideas on the board, look at different KA values or PKA values and look at the enthalpy of neutralization. That's great. Ionic rays, radius, because this temperature difference, working out delta H, you can use for any reaction where there is a temperature difference. So you could use displacement reactions, you could use for oxidation reactions, perhaps the measurable within the range of the thermometer probe, then that's absolutely fine. So transition metal displacement, effective change in the starting temperature on the measured value for enthalpy, that could be quite interesting, might be a bit more physics, but it's an avenue. And as I said, any reaction where heat is involved, you can use this method. Okay, this is number one. Uh, there will be around 10 in using data logging for success in IB chemistry internal assessments. You know what to do, smash that subscribe, subscribe button. Have a great day. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.